Well, that's just mad unfortunate. If only I wasn't doing a year-long celebration of Spider-Man because of all the Spider-Man media happening. Oh, wait. Hello, world of YouTube, and welcome to another video for the Year of the Spider. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, just whatever a spider can. A year-long celebration I started to celebrate not only the release of No Way Home, but the upcoming release of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a movie that is now delayed until next year. But I'm not gonna let that stop me from talking about Spider-Man ad nauseum. I mean, hey, we got Morbius at least. I'm just kidding, it's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. All jokes aside, I have other videos that I was gonna make for Year of the Spider that I could still rework into the framework of this delay. Uh, and plus, today's video has nothing to do with this, and more has to do with talking about the film trilogy that just ended at the end of last year, with No Way Home's physical release finally happening, or home release finally happening, and people, more people, by and large, can see No Way Home that didn't see it in theaters. I figured I would talk about not only my thoughts on the movie in a, in a broader sense, but talk about things I'd like to see in the upcoming trilogy that the end of No Way Home set up pretty spectacularly IMO. And I thought No Way Home in general was a pretty well done movie. It's not my favorite Spider-Man movie, but I could see it being someone's favorite Spider-Man movie. I thought it handled the multiverse stuff very well. I thought the players at hand all did their parts incredibly well. I loved seeing the nostalgic stuff that this movie was throwing at you. All the other Spider-Mans were really good. Uh, some parts of the post credit stuff were kind of, felt kind of innocuous or I could would have liked to have seen a little more of but what they had still set up the stuff for new stuff and it still got me excited to see even more Spider-Man something that I didn't necessarily think was impossible but it's incredible to me that after leaving two different Spider-Man movies I immediately was excited to see what they would do next and I think it helps that by the end of No Way Home because of Doctor Strange's spell Spider-Man is finally removed from the grand theatrics of the MCU. He's no longer dealing with Omega-level threats. He's not dealing with, like, demigods or, like, big-ass baddies. He's just grounded, and he's just doing Spider-Man-ass, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man things. And the prospect of him as this sort of anonymous hero in the streets of New York is what a lot of people like about Spider-Man. It's what I like about Spider-Man. Uh, I like, you know, the grand theatrics that Spider-Man can get involved with, but I like that there's a sort of juxtaposition. There's there's two different sides. There's that level, and then there's, like, the street-level Spider-Man, the, du the dude dealing with criminals that just happen to get wrapped up in some crazy, extravagant experiments. You know, and I'd love to see a lot of that played out in a college trilogy. I thought about long and hard about how I was going to do this video because I thought, well, maybe I could just talk about all the ideas I had in a in a three-part how I'd make video of talking about what players specifically at hand I'd like to see in a Spider-Man trilogy. And I did, in fact, lay out what I'd love to see in a trilogy with each movie. But instead, I'm going to paint some broad strokes. There's going to be a lot of broad strokes painted in this video because we don't need to get super nerdy with it in this video. I mean, we could. We really, we really could. But instead, we're going to rein it in. Rein it in are bold ambitions. It's something else I need to work on personally. The overall thing I'd like to see throughout this college trilogy is playing off of the memories of No Way Home. You know, at the end of No Way Home, Peter is the only one to really remember a lot of what happened in that movie. You know, he's the only one that remembers encountering all of these variants of other people from other universes. And I would like to see him try his best in Spider-Man fashion to prevent a lot of that from happening, while also just have, having dominoes that have already been planted in his movies sort of play out in future movies. I'd even like to have two subplots where he tries his hardest to prevent two villains from existing in his universe and failing masterfully at both. You know, I'd like to see the lizard done better than he was in The Amazing Spider-Man with a new student-teacher dynamic in these college years with a new Kirk Connors that once... Peter meets is like, oh shit, this guy is the Kurt Connors. I need to do my best to stop this guy from becoming a lizard who wants to make a world of lizard people. But, you know, I can just do it, just do it a little better. You know, you could even introduce 
a Harry Osborn variant into the MCU now. And instead of having them be childhood friends like they tried to do with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, you can just have Harry and Ned become friends. And Peter, in an act of trying to stop the Green Goblin from existing because of science experiments and goblins running amok, he then creates the Hobgoblin. It's quite enough for your final resting place. Huh? I think it would be an, an inch, a good payoff moment to what a lot of fans have been speculating would happen with Ned's existence in the MCU. I also think it'd be cool for them, since now J. Jonah Jameson is now in the MCU along with Scorpion, them to do a comics-accurate Scorpion in the movies, you know? Have Scorpion now a criminal out of prison spread slander of spider-man on the daily bugle only to get wrapped up in an experiment with jjj that gets him stuck in a scorpion suit and then spider-man has to step in obviously because they planted the symbiotes happening in, in the mcu now i would love to see venom done justice whether in a sort of hubris breaking way like i would love to have seen in the original spider-man 3 or to see them just do it better do better venom stuff with tom holland spider-man in the mcu I think that would be an interesting sort of place for them to take it, especially since Venom never met Spider-Man, so it gives them the opportunity to have this sort of black goo mentioned in No Way Home now happening in my world. What the fuck is going on? As far as other concepts, I'd love to see them explore as well because Peter and MJ aren't quite together anymore, even though Peter still loves MJ. I'd love to see them introduce a different dynamic. Not necessarily Gwen Stacy, because again, Gwen Stacy's been mentioned in No Way Home. I feel like it, the Peter Parker in the MCU would be kind of like thrown off by meeting his Gwen Stacy in, in his universe. I'd instead like to see them mess around with Black Cat. Bring Felicia Hardy into it, you know? Obviously, they're bringing in a lot of the New York street-level crime fighters like Luke Cage and Daredevil into the MCU, thanks to their acquisition and putting on Disney+. Plus. I'd like to see them explore more of that, you know, because obviously Peter knows he's not the only crime fighter. It'd be cool to see him have this sort of dynamic with a Felicia Hardy throughout at least a movie. Again, just that concepts I'd like to see explored in this Holland trilogy that are either staples of the comics or characters of the comics that haven't really been fully realized in the films yet, while also having a second opportunity to do concepts that they may have flubbed in earlier movies more successfully in this new trilogy thanks to no way home setup i don't know there's a lot of potential for a college trilogy of this spider-man and i would love to see at least some of these ideas come to life again not necessarily all in one movie spread across three you got a lot of potential for ideas you've already done a lot of heroes justice and made them in your own mcuified way with a lot of how they play into peter parker's life slash tony stark's life but i would love to see them because they're taking Peter out of a lot of the grand concepts of the MCU, put a lot more of the comics in the Spider-Man movies. You know, I've loved the Tom Holland trilogy. I think that Tom Holland's great in the role. And I feel like I've liked their adaptations on the characters that they've done because the Vulture and Mysterio, for as cool of concepts as they are as characters, aren't really the most compelling villains from a, from a story perspective. So to spin them into their own... Again, Tony Stark hating ass villain stories. I feel like it made a lot of sense. But now there are other cooler heroes you could give better stories to. And I feel like, again, these the past trilogy has set up some, reintroduced some characters and concepts that could be done better. And that's kind of what I would love to see with a Tom Holland trilogy. As a Tom Holland second trilogy potentially would be brought into the ether again i don't know the future of spider-man in the movies i know the spider-verse 2 and 3 are happening i know that sony is still going to do their villain movie shtick and i'm sure tom holland would return to do spider-man i just think that at this point it is probably far off in the horizon but i don't know i'm still excited for it i really like no way home what did you think of that movie what did, what would you like to see in a tom holland college trilogy let me know in the comments down below if you like this Whatever this was, give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join the ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here, though. Thank you again so very much for watching. I've been Viral Rack. You guys are good at lives and situations, and I'll see you another day.